Hello, I am Zarkoon, and this is World of Warships Legends. Today we're going to talk about the Tier 5 Premium Pan-Asian Destroyer, the Anshin, or Anshin? Honestly, I'm not quite sure how it's pronounced. In any case, this is the newest premium ship to be added to the store. You can purchase it today for however much Tier 5 premium ships cost. And it may be a good deal, because I think this ship is actually pretty dang decent. It is a Genevni class destroyer, so that is the Tier 5 Soviet or Russian destroyer. Shares the same number of guns as the Genevni, and it shares the same good gun characteristics in that the shell arcs are pretty flat. It's got a nice bit of range for a Tier 5 destroyer, and the reload time is pretty snappy. I've got it down to 3.2 seconds, but I am, of course, using the gun-focused Pan-Asian Destroyer Commander. I can't remember what his name is, but he's got that, I think, observant range skill that reduces the reload time. So I've got these things shooting at 3.2 seconds. The only real downside to them is that well, this being a Genevni class hull, the turret traverse is glacially slow. It is well above 25 seconds. I'm not sure exactly what the number is, but I've got the turret traverse down to 23 seconds. So it does take some time for the guns to get on target, but so long as you manage the turrets well, then you'll be able to get them on target, which is a good thing, because like the other Pan-Asian destroyers, this one comes with deep water torpedoes that cannot damage other enemy destroyers, so you'll need to use your guns for those. Unless you want to switch out the deep water torpedoes with conventional torpedoes. That's right, you can do that on the Anshin. Unlike other Tier 5 ships, the Anshin has three mod slots, and the final third one is used for swapping out the deep water torpedoes with conventional torpedoes. Now the deep water torpedoes have a range of eight kilometers. They do a little bit less damage than the conventional torpedoes, and they have a slightly longer reload time at a little bit over a minute. Whereas the conventional torpedoes you can use on this ship only have a 6 kilometer range, they reload quicker, and they do a little bit more damage. They're also significantly faster. I think the conventional torpedoes might actually go at 70 knots, whereas the deep water ones only go at 60. Nevertheless, I have fitted the deep water torpedoes to this ship just because of the increased range, and I figure with the gun power that I have in these guns, well, a lot of Tier 5 and even Tier 6 destroyers are going to be challenged by this thing's firepower, particularly the two destroyers in this game, which are a Fubuki and a Matsuki, neither of which stand any chance in the face of this thing's firepower. And as you can see, these torpedoes are pretty good as well. We managed to hit the Exeter with one, and now we're trying to catch this Dunkirk as he comes around the corner and we take this cap. This is actually probably the best game I've had in the Anshin, and it is a pretty aggressively played game as well. It is yet another six-pack, six-kill game, this, I think, will be the third game I featured in a row that features six kills, following my Nelson six-kill game and the Chili Games Des Moines game that I showed late last week. So, yeah, I've been kind of on a roll with these six-kill games here, and I was pretty pleased with the results of this destroyer. In any case, do you want to buy this thing? Well, I don't think it's going to be winning any awards in terms of its competitive abilities compared to other very strong destroyers at this tier, like the T-61, which of course is excellent. If you're in the market for any Tier 5 Premium Destroyer, the T-61 is probably the way to go over this. But I think this ship is fairly effective. I like the Genevni, and if you like the Genevni, then you'll probably like this thing too, because that's essentially what it is. It just has a little bit better torpedo power. One thing that I was disappointed about, though, is the smokescreen situation. 
Now, the other Pan-Asian destroyers in the Tech Tree line that we have come with some really excellent smoke screens. I think they're actually among the best smoke screens in the game. They're kind of like the British smoke screens in that you get an unusually high number of them. The Tech Tree line Pan-Asian destroyers get four. And if you deploy one of these smoke screens and you manage to use it for the full duration, then by the time it fades away, you're only about a minute away from having another smoke screen charge available to you. That's how they work in the tech tree line, and that means you essentially have smoke on demand for most of the game, provided you are managing the smoke screens effectively. Whereas on the Anshin, well, as you can see, it only gets two charges of the smoke screen generator, and they are conventional smokes, much like that found on the Genevni itself, I believe. They're not as long duration as, say, an American smoke screen. They last for over a minute. They can get the job done, but you only get two of them, and that is a little disappointing if you, like me, are a big fan of the pan-Asian smoke screens. And here we see me doing something a little bit risky here, which is rushing a Koenig, but he had his guns comp pointed completely away from me. He does turn to shoot me now, chunks me with HE, was, which I wasn't necessarily expecting, but that's fine, because we're able to take him out with our torpedoes, and that gets him off this capture circle, which, which means we should be able to reverse into the capture circle and take it. As for how this game is going, it is now a 5 versus 4 in our favor, and my team is pretty much on the other side of the map, aside from a friendly battleship who is to the left of my position, sailing up north past the Charlie cap there, and I don't know whether he is going to survive there. We're shooting out of Nevada with the guns. You can see that the accuracy on these shells isn't super, super fantastic, and that may be because I'm running the turret traverse mod in the first mod slot, or is it the second one? I don't know. Either way, I'm running the turret traverse mod in place of aiming systems mod 1, and of course aiming systems mod 1 does improve the dispersion, but... Like I said, these guns turn so slowly that you kind of want to buff their turret traverse. In any case, as I thought might happen, the friendly Mutsu goes down. He must have been the battleship over there by Charlie. So now it's down to four versus four with seven minutes left to go in the game. And there are still the two enemy destroyers, both of whom were last spotted near the Charlie cap. And as you can see, I'm headed this way, or the way toward the Charlie cap, rather. Now, what else is there left to say about the Anshin? Well, it doesn't have the best concealment ever. I've got it down to 5.7 kilometers with Bay as one of the inspirations, so it is a little bit more visible than maybe some of the other Tier 5 destroyers. Nevertheless, that concealment is more than enough to get the job done, especially when you have the 8km deepwater torpedoes equipped. There's a nice, comfortable window for stealth firing, but even if you go with the conventional torpedoes, they have a 6km range, and if you've got it down to 5.7km detectability, well, then you still have a tiny, tiny, what, 200, 300 meter window to launch your torps. As for the gun power on this thing, here we get a small taste of that in action. The Fubuki stands absolutely no chance, and there's the Matsuki, which is even less of a gunboat than the Fubuki is, having only two tiny little pea shooters on its hull. So he really stands no chance unless he launches torpedoes at us, which... He may or may not do. I don't think he's actually going to do it, and we're going to be able to finish him off here with the final blind shot. That's our fourth kill of the game, by the way. And with those two destroyers dispatched, it's just the Mutsu and the Nevada. Now, the Mutsu is on extremely low health, so we launch some rather optimistic torpedoes at him, not necessarily expecting that these torpedoes will, in fact, catch and sink him. After all, he should be getting shot at by my two remaining teammates in the battleship and cruiser, and as I said, he's got no health, but looks like he's healing up, so they are actually not going to be able to take him down, and he doesn't appear to expect any torpedoes coming his way, which, you know, it just goes to show. 
If you notice a destroyer killing your destroyer teammates and you're sailing past a location, well, expect torpedoes. This Mutsuki did not expect torpedoes, and as a consequence, he goes down and gives us our Kraken. That just leaves the Nevada, who's somewhere around this corner, and at this point, well, I don't think my teammates can possibly lose this game, even if I die suicide torpedoing the Nevada. I think we've still got this in the bag. So let's go for some style points and make this a six-pack. That was my thought process here. In any case, the Anshin, it's a good Tier 5 destroyer. I like it. Had fun in it. Obviously, this game was pretty good. And... It does offer the unique ability to fit conventional torpedoes on a line of destroyers that we're used to only having deep water torpedoes. So that may be a selling point for you. It may not be. In any case, it can absolutely be effective and it can be quite fun to play. So if you're a fan of the Russian destroyers, specifically the Gnevny, and you like the Pan-Asian deep water torpedoes, well, this may in fact be the destroyer for you. I'll probably continue playing it from time to time. It was a pretty good experience. In any case, I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing if you haven't already done that, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.